Assalamu alaikum everybody, I hope you all are doing well. Today we'll be talking about an organism that is responsible for causing wound infections associated with cat and dog bites. It's none other than Pasteurella multicida. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. So have a cup of tea and let's get started. Pasteurella multicida. It's a gram-negative rod or a cocobacillus. Cocobacillus is a shape somewhere between the spherical coccus and the rod-shaped bacillus. So you'll see sometimes it like a rod or both together. It's an encapsulated rod. It is short bacteria and is responsible for causing wound infections associated with cats and dogs bites. This is how Pasteurella multicida looks like under the microscope. But before talking about Pasteurella multicida in much detail, we should know about bacterial classification. Bacteria are further classified into spirochetes. They are also classified into acid fast based on acid fast staining. And there's an exception that is Mycoplasma bacterium. Bacteria are also classified based on gram staining into gram positive. We're done with all of them. If you're interested, be sure to check out the channel. And gram negative. And gram-negative bacteria are further subdivided into cocci, which includes Neisseria, Neisseria gonorrhea, and Neisseria meningitidis, and also into rods, which are further subdivided into aerobic, like Pseudomonas, anaerobic, like Bacteroides and Fusobacterium, and facultative, which is further subdivided into curved, that includes Campylobacter, Helicobacter, and Vibrio and into straight, which is further subdivided into enteric and related. That includes E. coli, Enterobacter, Serratia, Klebsiella, Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus. Into respiratory, that includes Haemophilus, Bordetella, and Legionella. And lastly, into zoonotic, which includes Brucella, Francisella, Pasteurella, the topic of today's video, and Yersinia. We are done with almost all of the gram-negative bacteria, so if you're interested, be sure to check out the channel. Lecture outline. We are done with the introduction of Pasteurella multicida. We are done with the bacterial classification. Now we'll be looking at morphology, habitat in transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. A huge thanks to TrueLearn for sponsoring today's video. TrueLearn is an incredible online exam preparation resource. This platform is built for medical students, nurses, and professionals. It helps you prepare for USMLE, COMLEX, NCLEX, and other exams. Getting started is super easy. Just click the link below in the description. This is the beautiful website of TrueLearn. Scroll it down. You can also check their plans and choose the one that you like. Hit buy now and use my special coupon code MEDZUKRUF at the checkout to get an exclusive discount. Login. This is the TrueLearn's dashboard. For creating the test, click the Create Test right there. Give it a name, choose a time limit, select if you want a tutor, and also the difficulty level. Once you're done, just hit Start Test, and your test is ready to go. Read the question, select your answer, and see how you did. TrueLearn explains the answer very well, just like that. So everybody, if you're interested in signing up on TrueLearn, click the link below and don't forget to use my special discount code MEDZUKRUF at the checkout. Sign up and enjoy. Morphology. Shape. As we've discussed earlier in the introduction section that Pasteurella multicida is rod-shaped cocobacillus. It is pink colored. The reason is it's gram negative and it exhibits a bipolar staining, which means it stains at both poles, means both ends, but it does not stain from the central area. Structure is an encapsulated bacterium. It is not responsible for forming spores and is non-motile. This is how Pasteurella multicida looks like under the microscope. We do not see any motility apparatus like a flagella. That's why this bacterium is non-motile. It is pink colored. The reason is it's gram negative. Habitate. 
hosts humans are its hosts and it's also found in some animals like it's the part of normal flora of mouth of domestic animals like cats and dogs i've put a cute picture of cat and dog here so you can memorize that pastorella is found in these animals transmission it is transmitted by biting bites of animals like cats and dogs pathogenesis i've put handshake of human and cat here which can help you memorize that this infection is transmitted by cats to humans this is the cat you can see its mouth it has got sharp and pointed teeth and pastorella multicida is found in the normal mouth flora of the cats so when cat will bite the humans its sharp and pointed teeth will implant the Pastorella multicida under the periosteum. Okay, now let me tell you where is periosteum. On top of everything, humans have skin. Skin has three layers. Top one is epidermis, then dermis, and then hypodermis. The last layer of the skin is also termed as its subcutaneous tissue. After these three layers of the skin comes the periosteum, which is a membrane covering the outer surface of the bone. So look how sharp and pointed the cat's teeth are, that they implant the pasturella under the periosteum, like under that membrane. And you know what? Sutures are the predisposing factors to the infection. Most white infections are polymicrobial. Now you might be asking me a question, what is polymicrobial? Okay, it has got two words in it. First one is poly, which means many, and the second one is microbial, which means for microbes. So these bite infections have a variety of facultative anaerobes, especially streptococcus species and anaerobic organisms in addition to Pastorella multicida. The capsule of this bacterium is a virulence factor. It also has an endotoxin that's present in its cell wall, which is also a virulence factor. Clinical findings. A rapidly spreading cellulitis at the site of an animal bite is indicative of Pasteurella multicidal infection. Incubation period is brief, usually less than 24 hours. Osteomyelitis can complicate cat bites because cat's sharp and pointed teeth can implant the organism under the periosteum, which is the membrane that covers the outer surface of the bone. Symptoms include pain, swelling, redness, tenderness, warmth, at the site of the infection and the patient may feel fever lab diagnosis we'll need a sample from the wound site like the site where the cat or dog has bitten then we'll go for microscopy and on gram staining this bacterium appears to be gram negative it's rod or coccobacillus in shape it is pink or red colored because it's gram negative and exhibits bipolar staining, which means it stains at both poles, but it doesn't stain from the central area. This is how Pasteurella multicida looks like under the microscope. It's pink colored. Why? Because it's gram negative. Treatment. Penicillin G is a treatment of choice. There's no significant antibiotic resistance. People who have been bitten by a cat should be given ampicillin to prevent Pasteurella multicida infection. Prevention. Avoid contact with animals such as cats to avoid their bites. Animal bites, especially cat bites should not be suited because they can complicate the situation. All right, everybody, let's have a quick recap. The organism we discussed today is Pasteurella multicida. It is responsible for causing pastoralosis. It is transmitted by animal bites. Hosts include humans, cats, and dogs. Diagnosis is based on gram staining and microscopy. And for treatment, penicillin G is the drug of choice. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. You've learned Pasteurella multicida in detail. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. I'd be happy to read them. And I'll catch you soon in the next video. And if you want to connect with me on my social media, I've got my Instagram and Twitter, both with the handle Medzokhrov. And I'll catch you soon in the next video. Till then, Assalamu Alaikum.